welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare a medieval cheesecake. We start with the ingredients. We need white wheat flour, cheese, eggs, white cane sugar and saffron. First we grind the saffron and then steep it in warm water. In this way the saffron will distribute homogeneously in the filling, giving a pleasant yellow color to the cheesecake. Saffron was one of the most used spices in the Middle Ages, not only for its fragrance but also as a colorant. Ancient Romans and Greeks cultivated and used the saffron, but not as much as in the Middle Ages. We find it occasionally in the recipes, but Pliny recalls that it was appreciated in particular as a perfume. Now we grind the sugar. Sugar too was known by ancient Mediterranean populations. It is mentioned by many authors, for example Dioscorides and Pliny, with the name Saccharon, but its use became substantial in the Middle Ages for both medicinal and culinary purposes. We cut the cheese and pound it in the mortar. The author doesn't specify which kind of cheese to choose. We preferred pounding it in the mortar for a more homogeneous outcome. We suggest choosing a fresh cheese with a little content of salt and a good amount of moisture. In the Middle Ages there were many kinds of cheese, fresh, firm and aged, made with buffalo, cow, sheep and goat milk. For this recipe we suggest a cow or goat cheese. Now we prepare the filling. We mix the cheese with three egg whites, the sugar and the saffron. This recipe is part of a cookbook written at the beginning of the 15th century by Johannes Bockenheim, a German cook and ecclesiastic who worked in Rome at the court of Pope Martin V. The book, written in Latin, is titled Registrum Cuquine and collects many interesting recipes that the author suggests specifically for some social classes or populations. This recipe in particular is oddly recommended to pimps and their women. There is clearly no relation between the social class and the recipe in this case, differently from others that we prepared previously. For example, stuffed eggs meant for monks and religious, or a leek soup and a beef stew intended for peasants. You find the recipes in the description below. We prepare the crust, kneading the flour with a pinch of salt and warm water. Frequently medieval recipes are just quick annotations in which the basic methods are given for granted, and this is one of these cases. There are no directions in this or other Italian medieval manuscripts about how to make the crust for the pies, but we find information in Renaissance cookbooks. The basic recipe for the crust is more similar to a kind of pasta than to a modern day pie crust. It is made indeed in the same way as lasagna. We prepared medieval lasagna in the past and you find the link to the video in the description below. In the Renaissance, we find the recipes more complex than the one we prepared today. Sometimes with the addition of saffron, eggs and rose water. But the basic method is the same. The 
during the Middle Ages and beyond, saffron was widely cultivated in Italy, but the demand was so high that it was also imported from eastern countries. In the manuscripts, we find two different names for saffron. One of Arabic origin, the other instead, crocus, comes from Greek and Latin. We divided the dough into two parts, one bigger for the bottom crust and one smaller for the upper crust. We rolled the dough into a thin sheet, just like the one you would roll to make pasta. There are plenty of pie recipes in the medieval cookbooks, prepared in many ways. This one is called a torta, but there were also pastello and coppo, made with different kinds of crusts. You find a few pie recipes that we prepared in the past months in the description below. In the medieval medical sources, such as Aldebrandino of Siena, we find both sugar and cannameli, which is the sugar cane, and literally means honey cane. Besides, ancient authors describe saccharon as a sort of crystallized honey found in some kinds of reeds. The best variety of sugar was white without impurities. The Renaissance authors report that it was available in variously shaped pieces and ground. Then we grease the pie pan with lard and lay the bottom crust. We cut and remove the excess part. If you prefer, use butter or olive oil to grease the pan, both are used by the author of this recipe. Though lard is the most common cooking fat in the medieval cookbooks. Now we roll the upper crust, we suggest rolling it a bit thinner than the bottom crust. In this way it will cook evenly. Medieval pies were filled in many ways, sweet or savory. Among the most common fillings we find vegetables, fruit, meat, cheese, eggs and seafood but also nuts and aromatic herbs. With the same feelings, cooks prepare the tortelli, which means literally little pies, usually boiled or fried. We cut the upper crust about the same size as the pie pan. We place the filling in the pie, lay the upper crust and seal it. If it is necessary, use a little water to seal the pie to prevent the filling from leaking during the cooking. When the filling will melt, it will make the crust swell with the risk of breaking it. We brush the pie with an egg wash. Eggs were used frequently to color the dishes and the crusts of the pies. In this case, it would form a little savory crust on the pie, making the upper part cook evenly. We bake the pie in the oven for about 20 minutes. The cooking time changes depending on the size of your pie. 
In this case, it doesn't need a long cooking. As soon as the crusts are cooked through, the pie is done. This delicious pie is an example of one of the most common dishes in the Middle Ages, in which the flavor of the cheese is enhanced by just one sweet spice, saffron, that blends with the other ingredients, giving to this dessert a great aromatic complexity despite its simplicity. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, or you're just looking for unusual and delicious recipes, please subscribe our channel.